It's Saturday, February the 10th, and it's a big day at the races. Today is Tampa Bay Festival Preview Day at Tepamia Downs. We will be there in a month for Tampa Bay Derby Day. It is also Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap Day here locally, where it's one of only three grade one races run at the meet. And then late tonight, it's Louisiana Premier Night with eight stakes races at Delta Downs. We started off with an excellent start to the racing week as I came out here on Wednesday afternoon on a gorgeous day and I was here for four races and I won three of them. From her lap from the rainbow just went up in the second and third was companion. To the layer, six to five, it's easy for me. Loaded up to six to five, double the bet, start the day with over twenty dollars in my pocket. Woo -hoo. Oh, no. Not good enough. That's another winner. That makes two today. Doubled the bet, and then because he was everybody's best bet, race six official, race eighty nine, another twenty, race over the turf thirty to win on the bet of the day, five, carbon data. Then on Thursday, I didn't think it'd be much of a racing day to write about, as I only had four selections on the day. But hey, I went four for four. One with my best bet of the day as I watched from home, Battle of Blenheim. Is outside of now third, with less than an eighth of a mile to go. We're down to three. I'm Bridal Rebel on the outside Battle of Blenheim. Battle of Blenheim. Well, what a, I'm Bridal Rebel was. And then on Friday, I had several selections, only one one. But hey, it was the bet of the day. And I made a profit on the day. Go figure. And here we are Saturday. Came out here, I met one of my favorite all-time students, Jen, all the way in from Colorado. And let's see how the racing turned out today. I passed the first two races at Gulfstream. My first live bet came from Tampa. It was their second. It was an allowance race. And I like number five, Rafting, who was sent off as the seven to five favorite. He'd come back off a near two year layoff with the seven for a long race. And that looked like it had been a prep for this. He was a decisive winner that day at nine to five. Today he was well back, not all the way in the back, but pretty far off the pace. So he made his big run on the turn. Triple the bat. Next up was the opener at Aqueduct, the maiden claiming, and I like number three, my girl Annie. Once you've lost six races in the maiden ranks, I pretty much scratch you off the list. But the rule in handicapping is there are no rules, and so my girl Annie was one to two in the program, simply looked much the best in here. It's a Chad Brown filly making your first start for a tag and Brown was 43% on this most powerful drop in racing. Sent off as a prohibitive one to nine favorite, right as to the front. Back to Parageous Dinah. They're coming toward the 16th pole and my girl Annie shakes loose. It's a battle for second from here as my girl Annie will sail home. Madeline's Hope cuts through on the inside to complete the exacta, but a no doubt about a performance from my girl Annie. With the bike three and a half. Double the bet, not gonna get rich, but to get another win. at Gulfstream was the first live race and it was the first race my girl Jennifer had ever bet on in her life. We had the favorite number four fast track Catherine. So they came out so of the Jane, gate. You bet your first horse race. What happened? 
jockey fell off. He fell off? Yeah. But did the horse finish? Yes. And he looked like he was pretty close to winning, but didn't count. Oh. What are the odds? What are the odds the jockey would fall off? Wow. In the fifth at Gulfstream, we were on the turf. It was a maiden special weight for three-year-olds sprinting five furlongs and before the race I hear a voice calling me from down on the apron hey Mark where's the thousand dollar bat window I look down it's my good buddy Steve Leland his wife and their friends from Alaska so I go down as the horses are going to the gate I told him after he had said you're doing pretty well this this winter and I said I am I said I'll tell you where I'm making all my money is with Todd Fletcher three-year-olds like this one and I said yeah like this one I look up at the board and all systems go number five is not the favorite sit right off the pace to the far turn to move around the far turn and with the lead toothpick and Marcos Manessas by a half a length all systems go as second here's the favorite solid poise to strike third Duncastle has an upset possibility needs racing room from fourth might have a rail opportunity here racing in fifth is stormy action as they run for home all systems go comes away with the lead solid to the attack second Duncastle still trying to Roused on the front by Sias, Solid is second on the outside and Duncastle. All systems go. Well, what it? It's going to be very Todd close Fletcher's for second. All Dun systems go. Wins the fifth. Fifteen to win. Paid nine twenty. Get back almost seventy dollars. Wow. Who didn't get the memo? Triple the bet. Paid nine twenty. I get back almost seventy dollars. Oh yeah, and Steve had it also. The fourth at Aqueduct was an allowance race. It was hard to go past the chalk in here. Skyler's Scram Jet was seven to five and should sit a perfect trip, I thought. Sent off at three to five, grinding away on the front runner into the final 16th. With an eighth of a mile to go. Angry Moon, Skyler's Scram Jet now chasing very gamely in second. They're followed by Hey Jabber Jaw and All Star Red. A 16th out. Angry Moon, Skyler's Scram Jet getting to him. Skyler's Scram Jet takes over late, and Skyler's Scram Jet wins it going away. And another win. Six at Gulfstream was a claiming race going five and a half furlongs, and I thought the favorite looked very vulnerable. But considering that all of these horses have been beaten multiple times for this cheap 6250 price, gave me confidence that number two, Be a Hero, was just too fast for these. Uh, what you're left with, his four buyer ratings of 80, 82, 76, and 76 on the dirt were clearly the fastest, and he was two for two at the distance, right to the front. Stalker was getting to him at the wire. Photo finish! to the top of the stretch on top by two journeys end to second racing in third is where's that cat from between horses Amase looks to come on no place to go yet from the outside and pachanga party putting in a run mito Siliendas has to circle five wide and they're at the top of the stretch with the lead it's be a hero has to seal the deal journey's end alongside the leader second pachanga party third mitos Iliendas on the outside and I had the winner get his nose down first.